Hello again, friends, and welcome to my uh, comfortable family room lounge for today's segment on Doc G's Wine and Spirits Review. I'd like to start out with a little sip. Cheers and welcome. So, over the last two sessions, as we have been leading up to the Thanksgiving holiday, just a few days away now, we talked about pairing wine, uh, red, white, rosé, bubbly, all sorts of wines in preparation for your Thanksgiving dinner. So I hope that um, you have planned your Thanksgiving day and that you are getting ready. You have almost everything lined up and ready to go in terms of your, your wine, your food, and hopefully your spirits, which we're going to talk about today. So as you know, um, the wine is a big part of the meal. The food is a big part of the meal. Most importantly, though, getting together with family is the best part of the whole celebration of Thanksgiving. So in our three-part series here, our last series today is going to focus on what you can do with all of these friends here on the table. As I gave some thought about what I wanted to do uh, for this segment to try to bring it all together, I thought it might be best to just go with a cornucopia, because that's what Thanksgiving resents, a cornucopia, a cornucopia of food, a cornucopia of wine, and today a cornucopia of spirits. So in that spirit, I'm going to spend today trying to give you a little bit of um, friendly advice to help work spirits into your day as you celebrate Thanksgiving with your friends and family. So to do that, I'd like to close out um, our Thanksgiving Day preparations with an overview of all of these uh, different spirits. There are quite a few here on the table. I am currently sitting here sipping a brandy. <laughs> it's, as you know, it's not my purpose to sit here today and try to sample from basically the heart of my bar. I don't think I'd make it through the segment, and I don't think that would be very pretty by the end. So at any rate. Let's take a look at how spirits can uh, work into your day as um, you have your, your uh, plans made and what you plan to do to serve uh, your company. So the way I look at it is um, I thought about just, you know, picking out one or two or three cocktails. And I thought that would really kind of do a disservice to you in trying to help you decide what would be best for the Thanksgiving Day array of um, foods and snacks and everything that you're going to have throughout the day. So what I'd like to do is try to show you and talk to you a little bit about how spirits can kind of be a weave inside and out of the different courses of the day. And I'm going to say it as I say all the time, you do whatever it is that you like. I'm going to try to share with you some ideas that I think are good ideas to uh, complement uh, what is hopefully going to be a great day with your friends and family. So let's start with uh, kind of the overview. What I'd like to do is talk to you about five major groups of spirits that I think will work very well into the whole day of Thanksgiving. <laughs> that work well anywhere, but Thanksgiving being the special day that it is, I thought we would work them into Thanksgiving today for the purpose of this conversation. So I want to talk about those five. The first being whiskey, the second being gin, the third being rum, the fourth being brandy, which I'm sipping right here, and the fifth and final one for today. And believe me, I know I'm not doing an exhaustive list. I'm just trying to hit the major points. And the fifth one being some uh, port, some ruby port. So with the whiskeys, let's start there. With the whiskeys, you can kind of break that down into, for me and my purposes, what my wife and I and mainly my friends like to have. We like to enjoy some rye whiskey. Here's one that happens to be made right here in Pennsylvania. It's called Dad's Hat. There's, of course, the quintessential bourbon. I happen to like Knob Creek. There are others that I like. Um, the single malt that I prefer, single malt scotch, is this one called Glenfiddich. 
and my wife is a big fan of the blended scotches with JB being her favorite brand. So you can see just from this initial array, uh, you have quite a bit to choose from. Now for the, the, the JB over here, my wife tends to prefer a scotch and soda. For me and all of these other ones, honestly, I don't really make mixed drinks, although I will have sometimes have a bourbon Negroni, a bourbon have a Manhattan, but I actually prefer these in just a small glass with a little ice cube and, and, and really prefer to sip them. So wherever it is you would uh, prefer to place whiskey into your lineup during the day, I would only have one general suggestion, and that general suggestion would be to try to keep the heavier spirits, meaning heavier in the ABV. These are all 40% 40 proof, 80% alcohol and higher. So they pack a wallop, and like I told you, it's a long day. So you certainly want to do these in moderation and really spread them out along with the food to help absorb some of the, the punch that they're going to give you alcohol-wise. So I would recommend, and it's kind of what we kind of do as a group and, our, and a family and with my friends, the whiskeys and, and these other spirits are usually before or after dinner kind of things. I personally don't recommend, you know, having a, a Manhattan while I'm into the middle of having a turkey leg. If you like it, go for it. I'm certainly, as you know, I'm, I'm a, a non-prejudicial uh, <laughs> drink recommender. Whatever it is you want to have, go for it. I'm only sharing with you what I like to do, and hopefully uh, it may be similar to what you like to do, or you might want to experiment with some of the different suggestions that I make. So for the whiskeys, I'm not going to go into Today is not about how they're made. How they're, they're, it's a distilled spirit. They're, they're powerful. You all, I think I know, are sophisticated enough for sure to know what a whiskey is. We can talk about the difference in blended whiskeys and scotches and bourbons and, and ryes and all of the other kinds of whiskeys at some other time. That's not for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is for eating and drinking. So when you're going to have any one of these whiskeys, they would be great up front with you if you're going to have, if you're going to serve some appetizers, whatever they may be, something to accompany, uh, something so you can put food in your mouth or excuse me, food in your stomach to have a little bit to, to help starting to soak up the alcohol. If you don't have any appetite or appetizers, just drink. Have your drink be your appetizer if that's what you want. I just would put the whiskeys up front or at the back end of the meal. I'm going to say that about almost all of these. Uh, you can do it during the meal. It's really up to you. So that's our first group. We get our whiskeys. And what I'll do after this, after I finish the post, I'll go out and find a nice uh, link on the internet that gives you some ideas for cocktails that are supposedly great with Thanksgiving. They say a gin and tonic, quite frankly, is really good because it's crisp and clean and won't interfere with a lot of the food. So there are others, I'm sure. Uh, but for now, like I said, we're just going to stick to the classifications of these different spirits and make my offerings from there. So let's move our whiskeys out of the way. And our next category that I want to go to, and you all know... <laughs> from hanging out with me all this time, probably what's coming, excuse me there, and that is going to be gin. So I've just randomly taken two gins from my bar, because if you're going to use gin as an accompaniment, um, it's one of the few here on the table that I don't prefer to drink straight, although I would make an exception for this one, which is a barrel rested gin, which is almost like a whiskey style gin, kind of starts like whiskey and finishes like gin, so you can drink it straight, and you just don't drink too much. But uh, I also have here a bottle of Hendrix, which is a quintessential, very clean, good gin for a martini, perfect gin for a gin and tonic. You can throw a cucumber in it for your gin and tonic to make it like a little bit of extra nourishment. And um, I would say gin, of all of these that I'm going to show you, probably ranks up there more as the most versatile of the day in terms of when and where you want to have it. I would say that for the barrel-aged gin, it's probably, again, good up front with the appetizers because it does have that wood on it, got that oak on it. The Hendrix is, you could slip right through the meal just 
drinking gin and tonics, to be quite honest with you. But the gins, you want to try to um, keep for, again, before and after the uh, festivities and, and save the wine for in the middle while you're sipping and, and having your, your great meal. So those are the gins. The one, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite gins, barrel aged or not, is Blue Coat, and this one is the Blue Coat barrel aged. Love it in a Negroni. Would make a great Thanksgiving Day drink. And Hendrix, as I said, gin and tonic all day, every day. So that takes care of that category. The next category that I would like to move to, and this is a drink that um, that I like to have um, during more during the cold weather, and this is just me, is rum. And the rum that I prefer tends to be the dark rum. I don't really care whether it's spiced or not, although those, those do go over well. But rum is another great drink, either up front. I would like to have rum more because it has that sweeter taste because of the caramelized sugar in it and, and the different molasses flavors that come out in a dark rum, I would prefer to have that more on the back end of the meal, probably with something sweet, or maybe if I don't feel like having a, a, a sweet, it depends on, you don't assume that people want to have pumpkin pie, you might be too full and you might want to have the pumpkin pie to, uh, the day after, but you need something sweet, rum might be your answer. So uh, there are many cocktails you can make with a dark rum. If you don't like the dark rum, you can get light rum. I prefer not to drink light rum pretty much at all. It's just not in my wheelhouse of uh, favorites. But I really do like dark rum. And the one that I happen to have here, we were just we did a little excursion down to St. Michael's, Maryland. There's actually a very good uh, distillery in the little town of St. Michael's called Winden Distillery. And they make a rum called Lyon, or excuse me, that's my French coming up, Lyon, L-Y-O-N, rum. And they have a whole line of rums, and they're fantastic. Sorry, I need a little pause there. Get the whistle wet again. So there is a, your, your third category of the categories that I was talking about, working in a rum, dark and stormy, uh, with ginger beer, if it, See, the, the reason that I, I want to go back and re-clarify why I, I say that, because cocktails tend to be a meal in a glass. And when you're getting all those different ingredients mixed in, and the, the cornucopia, to use that word again, of food that you're going to put away on Thanksgiving Day, and you start throwing in these big, sugary, overwhelming sometimes cocktails it tends to it tends to have you asleep halfway through the turkey so um, that's not what I want to do to you I want you to be able to my goal for you would be to be able to sample some good alcohol all day long and then when you take your last sip <laughs> you can pass out in the chair on the sofa or on the floor if that's what you want. But don't do it along the way. There's too much good food, hopefully a lot of good conversation, and a lot of time with family and friends. So let's move on from <coughs> <coughs> too much talking. Got to do a little more drinking. So let's move on to the next one, and that's the one in my glass. And this one happens to be a brandy. I promise you, sometime in the heart of the winter, this segment will be all about brandy and the different styles of brandy that you can get. This one happens to be a French, excuse me, this is actually a cognac. Cognac and brandy are, are very much aligned with each other in terms of the way they're made. It's Again, it's cognac comes from the cognac region in France. You know, it's that, that French thing, you know, you've got to talk about the region. So we're not talking about that today. However, brandy, to me, this is one of those that you could actually, and I love to sip brandy here by the fire after the day has been done, after I've had my meal and things quiet down, kind of to close out my day. 
and you get yourself a nice little brandy snifter like this let your hand warm it up a little bit you don't need any ice in it you don't want it chilled but it is a great accompaniment to um, just about any part of the meal because this is actually distilled from grapes it's not as strong from an alcohol standpoint if you um, look at the uh, percentage of alcohol it's 40 percent alcohol it's 40 percent ABV so it's it's 80 proof so it's a little bit this this one in particular some of them aren't as strong so it's uh, a good alternative to if you don't want to get into these distilled spirits you can use well grape is technically a distilled spirit too but these this has a wonderful caramel scent it's got a little bit of orange on the nose it accompanies this glass is perfect it's great with cheeses it's great with sweets uh, it's great at the end of the day just to help the overall digestion of your food so brandy cognac courvoisier is one that comes to mind all I'm telling you is if you have time between now and Thanksgiving we're only a couple days away get yourself into the liquor store if you don't like brandy try it if you do like it go get your favorite brandy it's a perfect drink to have for the day and to close out you might want to get yourself a nice decanter like this to keep it in so you don't have to always go find the bottle and finally at the sweetest part of the day when you're breaking out the pumpkin pie the chocolate cake the chocolate chip cookies whatever it is you might want this one I totally recommend you save until the very end with dessert it's really what I would call the only dessert wine here today. And this one is called Graham's Reserve Port Six Grapes. Readily available, moderately priced. And by the way, for the brandies and these ports, you can go from bargain basement to break in the bank. So you make your decisions based on how much you feel like putting out. Again, as I always say, it doesn't, there's differences in the quality, but I got news for you. This, this brandy is. 30 bucks this port is 22 on sale and you're going to have it for a while this is not something you slam down and i mean if you have 15 people it's not going to last but if it's only five or six of you you're going to get a couple servings you only want a little bit of this in a little port glass to sit with your chocolate cake you could have it with your pumpkin pie you could have it with your chocolate chip cookies and like i said if you're full you can just have it in a glass so that's what you can do for all of your Thanksgiving Day spirit needs. So let's review before we say goodbye. You got your whiskeys, scotch, bourbon, rye, whatever other whiskey you like, Canadian Club, Crown Royal, whatever it is you like. You got your gins. You know we've talked enough about gin, but there's a compendium, a cornucopia. For the fourth time then there are your rums there is a lot you can do with rum then there's your brandies and your cognacs and then there is your ports if you like limoncello if you like Kahlua uh, whatever it is you like uh, you can work those in throughout I, I try to break out most of the highlights of my bar for you here today in hopes that you will have a fantastic Thanksgiving. So in closing, thank you for hanging out with me for this Thanksgiving trilogy from the whites to the reds and rosés and now to the spirits. May your Thanksgiving day be happy. May it be safe. May you enjoy your family. And most of all, may you have a good time with all of the wines and spirits that you put together and until the next time cheers and happy thanksgiving <laughs>